been a Turo host since 2017 and I've been a YouTuber since 2020. And over the last few years, I have repeatedly preached the idea of renting out low end economy cars on Turo and how I full wholeheartedly believe that that is the best business model to pursue. In fact, I would be willing to bet that if I had a dollar for every single time I said low end economy car on this channel, I would have enough money to buy an actual low end economy car. But of course, like everything, there are a lot of people that disagree with me. And over the years, I've been repeatedly told that I am wasting my time with low-end economy cars. And that rather than owning a dozen cheaper cars, I would be much better served owning a couple of mid-tier or high-end luxury cars because of the fact that a few higher-end cars versus many low-end economy cars mean less maintenance, mean less cost, mean less time commitment, and overall, it would just be a better business model to pursue. In fact, I I've been told this so many times over the years that curiosity finally got the best of me. And in August of 2021, my fiance HP and I bought a Maserati Ghibli to rent it out on Turo for the sole purpose of finally laying this debate to rest to answer the question, does a high end luxury car really make more than a cheaper low end economy car? So we laid out an entire experiment. We decided that we would buy one Maserati Ghibli valued at around $30,000, and we would put this Maserati against five low-end economy cars totaling out to $30,000. This was a six month long experiment, and during the course of this experiment, we kept track of things like our time, so how much time these cars were requiring, how much maintenance these cars cost, how much time we were spending checking in and out these cars, the different expenses associated associated with these cars and of course the end of the day profit. And as I sit here in front of you today, this experiment has officially come to a close. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down the final results of this experiment. I'm going to be breaking down this experiment in a little bit more detail. And I'm also going to be finally giving the answer of is a low end economy car really better than a high end luxury. So let's get started. Now, before we dive in, if you guys could do me a huge favor, and if you could hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and hit that notification bell, I would greatly appreciate it. This helps my channel grow because it helps let YouTube know that you guys are enjoying my content and thus YouTube pushes my content out to a new audience. Additionally, if you guys are interested in learning more about the business model that I use to grow my Turo fleets, I do have a online course called the Car Sharing Masterclass. This is a full A to Z guide on how to start your very own car sharing business. If you use the code Maserati, you can get $25 off of that purchase. Now, like I said in the intro to this video, HP and I purchased a Maserati Ghibli back in August for the sake of putting it against five of our low-end economy cars. Now, let's first dig into what our thought process was whenever we picked out the Maserati Ghibli, because let's face it, the Maserati Ghibli does not have the best reputation, especially whenever it comes to reliability, which is super important whenever it comes to Turo. Now, whenever we decided that we were going to pursue this experiment and we were going to buy a high-end luxury car, we wanted to find a car that had a high perceived value. Basically a car that somebody looks at and they think to themselves, wow, that is a nice car. And in my opinion, I think that there are few cars that do this as well as the Maserati Ghibli, especially when you take into consideration the actual price of buying a used Maserati Ghibli. You see, we purchased our 2015 Ghibli for $29,500. And whenever people look at the Maserati, the thing is, is that they don't see a $30,000 car. They look at at that car and they think of an Italian luxury brand. And because of that, that car must be a hundred thousand dollars. That's something that I think is a very common thought process that people go through whenever they see the Maserati Ghibli. And the thing is, is that if we compare that price tag to virtually any other car on the road, it's actually a really reasonable price for a used car, regardless of the make model and type of car you're looking for. And so that's ultimately the reason why we want the Maserati is because though there is this high perceived value associated with the car, it's it's Italian, it's high luxury, it looks super nice, it has a Maserati badge on it. There is this perceived value associated with it, but the price tag doesn't have that same value. It's basically the same value of any middle of the road car you'd find on the road today. And you see, perceived value was really important whenever we were determining which car we wanted to buy because we wanted to find a car that we could rent for a premium price. If you look at other cars on the Turo platform that are renting between $125 and $150 per day, many of these cars are cars that cost $50,000, $60,000, $75,000, but the Maserati Ghibli gets the exact same daily trip price at a fraction of the cost, which is something that worked out really perfectly for the experiment that we wanted to conduct. 
But the Maserati was only half of the experiment. The other half was our low end economy cars. Now, whenever it came to choosing the low end economy cars that we picked for this experiment, we needed to find cars that had a total value of about $30,000. And with that figure in mind, we chose five of our low end economy cars. This included our 2007 Ford Focus, our 2009 Ford Escape, our 2007 Toyota Yaris, our 2010 Honda Fit, and our 2011 Mazda 2. These cars in total are valued at about $30,000, and that is why we chose them for this experiment. Now, whenever we were executing on this experiment, there were a few things that we had to modify and adjust in order to level the playing field and in order to make this experiment as fair as possible. Number one is that we took into account all of the expenses with the cars. This included things like repairs, parts, maintenance, tires, anything that needed to be done to the vehicles. The one expense that we did not take into account and that was excluded from the total tally for these cars was the Maserati's monthly payment. We did of course make a monthly payment on the Maserati. The Maserati was 100% financed, meaning we purchased it with zero down, but we did not take into account the monthly payment for the sake of this experiment because of the fact that it would skew the experiment to benefit the five low end economy cars. The five low end economy cars are not financed and we felt like it was unfair to compare a financed car to multiple unfinanced cars. And it was basically the equivalent of comparing apples to oranges. So because of that, we left the monthly payment out of the picture as a whole. Additionally, we did take into account HP's time. At this point in time, HP is pretty much the one that manages the car fleet and he's the one that's working on the fleet on a day by day basis. Now, one of the key arguments that people tell us whenever they are advocating for high end luxury versus low end economy is the fact that buying a couple of high end luxury cars requires significantly less time than owning multiple low end economy cars. So we of course had to take HP's time into this in order to make the experiment as accurate accurate as possible. So because of that, we tracked his time when it came to conducting repairs, when it came to dealing with maintenance, as well as the time it took him to check in and out vehicles. We basically took this time into account by charging a $25 per hour rate associated with his time. So for every hour that was spent working on an individual car, a $25 expense was added to the total, deducting the overall profit of that vehicle. And last, but certainly not least, this experiment was originally intended to be six months long. It was supposed to last from September until February, but unfortunately in January of this year, the Maserati Ghibli was totaled, which cut the experiment short by one month, meaning that the experiment only lasted for five rather than the planned six month period of time. Now, whenever it came down to the results of this experiment, I am not going to lie, the Maserati did significantly better than I thought that it would do. It not only was rented out more often, but it made more money on a month by month basis. In fact, it did so well that it prompted me to make a video at the beginning of January titled, Was I Wrong About Turo? And in that video, I laid out my thoughts that maybe I've been wrong about high end luxury cars all along. But unfortunately, about a week later, the Maserati was totaled on a rental by a guy who was speeding excessively in the car and thus hit a wall. And then that prompted me to make a secondary follow up video titled, Maybe I Was wrong about Turo. And in that video, I laid out the pros and cons of owning a high end luxury car. But if you guys are interested in learning more about this experiment and seeing exactly how it was conducted, then I encourage you to check out my vlog channel because everything throughout this experiment from August until present day has been documented and published onto that channel from buying the Maserati to managing the Maserati, even the end of the experiment where HP and I hide each other in the face based off of who won or lost the experiment that we conducted. So if you're interested in checking out that video or checking out that channel, I will include a couple of links down in the description below so that you can watch those videos where we really go into a little bit more in depth. Now let's dig into the numbers and I have them written down right here because there's, there's too many of them to remember off the top of my head, but let's dig into the Maseratis first. So in this five month period of time, this Maserati Ghibli made from earnings. So trip earnings from trips that the car went out on, it made $6,087.22. That's the money that the car brought in from reservations, but that isn't all for the Maserati. The Maserati was totaled. So we received a settlement for that total loss. And through that settlement, we made a profit of $2,345.06. So we actually were paying 
paid out more than what we originally paid for the vehicle back in August. That meant that the total profit that we made off of this car after all of the expenses have been paid equated to $8,432.44. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that was significantly more than I anticipated that the Maserati would make, especially considering the fact that the Maserati spent a lot of time sitting. It was not rented out consistently. It was rented out significantly more on the weekends than it was during the week. And as a result, HP and I had a lot of opportunities to enjoy this car and to drive it while simultaneously renting it out on Turo. But whenever we compare this number to our five low end economy cars, it's pretty surprising because in this exact same period of time, our five low end economy cars, which again consists of a 2007 Focus, 2009 Escape, 2007 Yaris, a Honda Fit, and a Mazda 2, these cars made a total profit of $16,212.32. So the five low-end economy cars made almost twice as much as the Maserati Ghibli. Now, I'm not going to lie, I was really surprised by that amount. I was surprised at how much the Maserati Ghibli made, but I was also surprised at how much our low-end economy cars made as well, especially considering the fact that during this experiment, our five low-end economy cars were not fully utilized. For example, our 2007 Toyota Yaris was out of commission for two months of the five-month experiment because of a major major transmission problem. This meant for two months, this car was not only bringing in nothing, but it was also costing a lot of money to fix. In addition to the 2007 Toyota Yaris, our 2008 Ford Escape was also out for the month of December. So the fact that we had cars that were out pretty severely for different periods of time throughout this experiment, and yet they still made twice as much as the Maserati Ghibli, I think truly is a testament to the power of low-end economy cars. But the thing is, is that not only was our low-end economy cars underutilized during this experiment, but to be honest, things couldn't have gone much better with the Maserati Ghibli. Though the car was totaled in the end, throughout the five months that it was actively being ran on Turo, it had no issues at all. The car was extremely reliable, and I don't know if that's because we were just lucky or what the case was, but in the five months that we owned the car, and in the roughly 15,000 miles that we put on the car, this car had no issues at all, meaning it was really cost-effective to run. Now, whenever it comes to the final results of this experiment, there are a few key things that I want to point out. Number one is the fact that I know that this experiment was a little bit flawed. It was difficult to lay out the ground rules precisely enough to level the playing field and to make this experiment as accurate as possible. And I understand that there are a lot of factors that come into play whenever you're figuring out which cars will perform best on Turo. Things like where you live, what type of renters are renting your car, how much money you have available. These are all factors that will heavily dictate how well your cars do on Turo. But I do also believe that low-end economy cars can work in most markets, and I do think that this experiment proved that to an extent. The second thing I'd like to note is that our 2009 Mercedes-Benz C300 was not included in this experiment. We left that car out of the picture as a whole, but this car has actively been being rented out over the last year, and in this exact same five-month period of time, the Maserati Ghibli only made $500 more than our 2009 Mercedes-Benz C300. The Mercedes Mercedes-Benz is a $6,000, roughly 12-year-old car, and yet it only made $500 less than our 2015 $29,500 Maserati Ghibli. I really felt like that was quite the testament to how you really don't need to spend a lot of money to find a car that generates a ton of revenue, and the Mercedes-Benz C300 is a perfect example of that. And really, the last thing I want to touch on is the fact that this experiment really solidified, at least for me, the idea of renting out low-end economy cars. It really proved in my mind that renting out low-end economy cars is not only more profitable, it's more scalable, and it's just a better business model than renting out high-end luxury cars. But at the same time, I was pleasantly surprised at how well the Maserati did. And even though the Maserati didn't do nearly as well as our low-end economy cars, this car still did very well on Turo. And I think that in this experiment, I really learned that if you're somebody who wants to own high-end luxury cars, if you're somebody that wants to buy a really nice car and you want to rent that car out on Turo in order to make a little extra money, I think that that's a business model that's definitely worth pursuing. I think though that the number one thing you should 
should keep in mind is to buy that car below market value because HP and I ended up ahead whenever our Maserati Ghibli was totaled because of the fact that we got a solid deal on the car when we purchased it. But had we bought that car for a higher price, we would have been left underwater and we would have really been screwed whenever the car was totaled in January. I think if you're somebody who's looking for a low cost entry into a business model that you can scale and make a lot of money with, low end economy cars is going to be the best route to pursue every day of the week. But if you're somebody who's a car enthusiast, if you wanna find a way to make some money with cars that you're passionate about, I think that high-end luxury can be a really great route to pursue as well. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some really valuable insight into the argument of low-end economy versus high-end luxury. If you guys have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.